issues, but I wanted to zoom out on your first year in office. Inflation is up. Uh, your signature domestic legislation is stalled in Congress. In a few hours from now, the Senate, uh, an effort in the Senate to deal with voting rights and voting, uh, voting reform legislation is going to fail. COVID-19 is still taking the lives of 1,500 Americans every day. And the nation's divisions are just as raw as they were a year ago. Did you overpromise to the American public what you could achieve in your first year in office? And how do you plan to course correct going forward? Why are you such an optimist? Look, I didn't overpromise. And what I have probably uh, outperformed what anybody thought would happen. The fact of the matter is that uh, we're in a situation where uh, we have made enormous progress. You mentioned the number of deaths from COVID. Well, it was uh, three times that not long ago. It's coming down. Everything's changing. It's getting better. Look, um, I didn't overpromise, but I think if you take a look at what we've been able to do, uh, you'd have to acknowledge we made enormous progress. But one of the things that I think is something that uh, one thing I haven't been able to do so far is get my Republican friends to get in the game of making things better in this country. For example, I was reading the other day, and I, had, I wrote the quote down so I don't misquote him. A quote from Senator Sununu when he decided that he wasn't going, excuse me, Governor Sununu, when he decided he wasn't going to run for the Senate in New Hampshire. Here's what he said. They were all, for the most quote, they were all, for the most part, content with the speed at which they weren't doing anything. It was very clear that we just had to hold the line for two years. Okay, so I'm just going to be a roadblock for the next two years? That's not what I do, Sununu said. He went on to say it bothered me that they were okay with that. Then he was on to say, I said, okay, so we're not going to get stuff done if we win the White House back, if we win the White House back. Why didn't we do anything in 2017 and 2018? And then he said, how the Republican Sununu spoke to answer the challenge? He said, crickets, yeah, crickets. They had no answer. I did not anticipate that there'd be such a stalwart effort to make sure that the most important thing was that President Biden didn't get anything done. Think about this. What are Republicans for? What are they for? Name me one thing they're for. And so the problem here is that I think what's happens, what I have to do in the, in the change in, in tactic, if you will, I have to make clear to the American people what we are for, we passed a lot. We passed a lot of things that people don't even understand what's all that's in it, understandably. Remember when we passed the Affordable Care Act and everybody thought that, uh, you know, it really was getting pummeled and beaten and it wasn't until after we're out of office in that next campaign, when uh, that off year campaign, and uh, I went into a whole, I wasn't in office anymore, we went into a whole bunch of districts campaigning for Democrats in Republican districts who said they wanted to do away with, with uh, uh, health care, with Obamacare. And I started pointing out that if you did that, pre-existing conditions would no longer be covered. And they said, huh? We didn't know that. We didn't know that. And guess what? We won over 38 seats because we had explained to the people exactly what, in fact, had passed. Now, one of the things that I remember saying, and I'll end this, I remember saying to President Obama when he passed the Affordable Care Act, I said, you ought to take a victory lap. And he said, there's so many things going on, we don't have time to take a victory lap. As a consequence, no one knew what the detail of the legislation was. They don't know a lot of the detail of what we pass. So the difference is, I'm going to be out on the road a lot, making the case around the country with my colleagues who are up for re-election and others, making the case of what we did do and what we want to do, what we need to do. And so I don't think I've overpromised at all, and I'm going to stay on this track. You know, one of the things that uh, I remember, and I'll end this, uh, I was talking with, uh, you know, uh, Jim Clyburn, who was a great help to me in the campaign in South Carolina. And Jim said, and when he endorsed me, and there was a, there was a clip on television in the last couple of days, and, of Jim, 
and has said that we want to make things accessible and affordable for all Americans. That's health care. That's education. That's res prescription drugs. That's making sure you have access, access to all the things that everybody else has. We can afford to do that. We, can af we can't afford not to do it. So I tell my Republican friends, here I come. This is going to be about what are you for? What are you for? And I lay out what we're for. Um, uh, Mary, 